remote control of toy drones that you would fly to your neighbor's house and take photos, but rather drones that have taken the lives of over 2,400 people in the last five years by the US alone. I'm going to be talking about two questions. Should we stop the use of drones? And can we even stop the use of drones? What I think is that we can stop them, but not in the way that you would think. But before I begin, I need to tell a story. About a long time ago, there was an Egyptian king who absolutely adored the game of chess. And he searched out through his kingdom and said, someone, can you bring me the man who invented this game? So they got the man, he came to his castle, and he said, I will give you any reward that you want for creating this lovely game. And the man said, I am but a humble farmer, and I would love some rice for my family. The king thought, fantastic, how much do you want? So the man said, well, I invented the game of chess, so we'll let the chessboard decide. For every square on the board, the amount of rice will double. So on the first square, we'd have one piece. On the second, two pieces. And on the third, four. All the way up to the 64 squares. Now in the audience, just think, how much rice would that be? Think you could like, cup it in your hand, or fill up a bowl, or even a table? The actual answer is that it is more rice than there is on Earth right now. Actually, more rice than has ever been grown on Earth in the past 700 years combined. The mountain would be larger than Mount Everest. This shows that humans, in general, aren't good at understanding something called exponential growth. We are, however, very good at understanding and predicting linear growth, which is growing in even increments all the way. This is unfortunate for people who are involved in planning for technology, because tech grows at an exponential rate. So this graph shows how many um, transistors are on a thousand dollar chip over time. This graph looks linear until you notice the scale, which shows that every increment, it <coughs> multiplies by 10. This means that roughly every year and a half, the computing power doubles. This has very important real world consequences for us. It means that sometime this year, a high-end desktop computer will be as powerful as a real mouse. And sometime in the year 2023, it'll be as powerful as one computer. And in the year 2045, it will be more powerful than all the humans on Earth. <coughs> this graph shows the growth in drone strikes by the UK over the past six years. Just think back, 10 years ago, drones didn't even exist. With technology increasing exponentially, how can we even hope to stop whatever comes along in 2025? So there are many potential positive uses for drones, but let's look at how we're actually using them right now. We're using drones to fight wars. And wars are fought over so many reasons, like greed or terrorists or territory threats. Yeah. Um, so, and for every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. We've dwelled on some very negative uses for drones, but let's look at some positive ones. This is an example that's being used in drones, <coughs> where if you're shopping with your elderly father, for example, and he has a heart attack in the hospital, what you would normally do is you'd call the emergency services and they'd come in 10 to 20 minutes with the tech guy. But with the drones, you could call up an ambulance and they'll send a drone to your location using your cell phone, and the doctor can see through exactly what you're doing and instruct you on how to use a defibrillator and potentially save a life. As good as saving one life is, here are some other possible uses that can save many more than one life. They're being used in Poland right now to monitor police brutality and protests. They're scanning disaster areas that would normally be inaccessible, like Chernobyl. They're looking at dangerous or inaccessible places, like the wilderness of Canada. <coughs> they, they can be monitoring endangered wildlife, in Alaska. And they're even being used in filmmaking to bring new possibilities, like the opening scene from Skyfall was shot completely by a drone. So trying to stop drones would be missing the point. If you think back now, what smartphone did you have 10 years ago? Remember the iPad only came out six years ago. What about 20 years ago? See, the thing is that we don't need to stop people from needing drones, because the Stone Age didn't end just because we ran out of stones. It ended because something better came. And killing people won't end because we run out of drones. It'll never end. So all we need to do is focus on the positives, and pretty soon the negatives won't matter anymore. Trying to stop drones 
is just missing the point. Thank you.